we're going to look at some interesting things there in, in God's Word, but I want to read something to you that, that I saw. Very interesting. Rivers do not drink their own water. <laughs> Trees do not eat their own fruit. Mm. The sun doesn't shine on itself, and flowers do not spread their fragrance for themselves. Mm. Living for others is a rule of God and nature. That's good. We are all born to help others. Mm. No matter how difficult it is, life is good when you're happy, but much better when others are happy because of you. Mm. That's good. It's something to think about um, because in Philippians we, we learn a lot about that, but that's not what we're going to look at particularly this evening. Um, <clears throat> But if you would look in in Philippians chapter two, <clears throat> trials and testings. How many of you all have those? Raise your hand. <laughs> okay, we we all have those, um, and they never end, right? Amen. Somehow we get to thinking that that was the last one we just went through. Mm-hmm. Hopefully it was, but reality is it's not. Um, you ever ask, why did God let that happen to me? Mm. Why me? Um, better question is, why not? Yeah. Me? Somehow we put ourselves above Jesus. Yeah. Think about the suffering He went through. He was homeless, mm. born in a, a feed trough. Not born in a feed trough, but that was His baby bed. Right? Yeah. Never had a home of his own. Didn't even have his own car. In those days, it was a mule or a donkey. Had to borrow one to make his trip into Jerusalem at one point. But he was homeless. Uh, He suffered a lot of things. A lot of people lashed out at Jesus and made uh, false remarks about him. And of course it got worse towards the end of his life uh, to the point of death and somehow we feel like God shouldn't let anything bad happen to us. You ever ask yourself why? what's God's purpose for all this tribulation in my life? Mm -hmm. I mean really? Me? You ever ask yourself why do good things happen to bad people or Bad things happen to good people. Or good things happen to bad people, vice versa. You ever ask yourself that question? I have. God's Word gives us reason for all these questions. Um, I've even, I don't know about you, you probably haven't done this, but I've even asked, why didn't God let this person be removed from my life? Mm -hmm. Right? Right? <clears throat> but there is a reason. It's what I'm getting to. Yeah. God's plan is to mold and shape us to be more like Christ. Amen. Right? Amen. That's His big picture That's right. plan. And the name Christian means Christ-like. Mm. So my question is, are you Christ-like? In other words, if a blind person could hear you say what you say, the tone of voice that you use, Mm. would they assume that you were possibly a Christian? Mm. I feel guilty here about that because there's times when things leave my lips that shouldn't. And there's times when I have attitudes that I shouldn't. There's times that I think things that I shouldn't. And I do not portray the perfect image of Jesus. Mm. So what that means is is that God's got some work to do with me. Maybe with you. Amen. So in Philippians chapter 2, 
The Bible says in verse 5, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Mm. What mind? Well, the verse prior to that tells us, Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Mm. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank You for Your Word. Lord, we need Your Word yes. in order to do the things You want us to do. Yes. And I pray that You would help us tonight to learn what that is. Lord, help us to have a closer mindset that You'd want us to have. Yes, Jesus. Lord, I pray that You would help us to embrace the tribulations and the sufferings that You put in our path it's because we understand that they do help to form us to be more like Jesus. Father, help me to say the things that I should tonight and only the things that I should so that I can relay Your message to Your people. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Well, okay, so I want to I need to have the mindset of Jesus. But why do I have to suffer to get it? Mm. Um, turn over a page to Philippians chapter 3, verse 18. I'm sorry, verse 10. That at the name of Jesus, I think I've got the wrong verse here, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. I do. I have the wrong verse. Chapter 3. You're in chapter 2. Sir. I'm sorry. Yeah, chapter 3 and verse 10. The question is, why do I have to suffer? Paul answers that. He says here, that I may know Him. Mm. And the power of His resurrection. Mm. And the fellowship of what? His sufferings, being made conformable unto His death. So Paul is saying there, the reason <clears throat> that we suffer is so that we can have the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. um, we cannot understand what He's wanting us to see and what and do unless we understand how He thinks, what He expects, how He feels. All of that can only come through suffering. Mm. Um, look in verse 29 of chapter 1. Same book. This one is a little bit scary because of the truth of it. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on Him, but also to suffer for His sake. There's many other verses. We're not going to go through all of them. But not only is it going to happen, it's required. Mm. Right. If God allowed suffering to afflict, to afflict His only begotten Son, what makes us think that we should be exempt from it? Amen. We're not too good. He wasn't. Mm. He was perfect. Amen. We're not. Amen. Daniel prayed for help one time. And it took three weeks for the angel to get to it. <clears throat> he was delayed because of the prince of Persia, better known as Satan. And Job, he was severely tested by God through the devil. Mm. These were great Christians, and yet God not only allowed suffering in their life, but in some cases he actually orchestrated it. Mm -hmm. Trials are meant to grow us. We were having a a meeting one time at Camp Tracy, in service training is what they called it. And the particular person that was doing the training, um said right off the bat, right at the very beginning, 
kind of turned me off in, to, to start with, with her comment. Um, and she even said, you're not going to like what I'm fixing to say. And she was right. Uh, we didn't. I didn't anyway. I don't know about everybody else, but I didn't like it. Here we are at Camp Tracy Children's Home with troubled teenagers trying to help these teenagers to learn about Jesus, learn about respect for authority, learn about how to work, how to clean everything about life that they so far had not learned. And she makes this comment in this meeting. You are not here to help these students. I, got, I almost got up and walked out. <clears throat> By the way, you're not here to help people at church. She said you're here to, so God can prepare you for heaven. By forming you to be more like Jesus. How is He going to do that? That's good. He's not going to do that on the mountaintop. He's not going to do that through a well-padded bank account. He's not going to do that with a problem-free life. Amen. You don't learn when you're on the mountain. Right. You don't grow closer to Jesus when you're on the mountain. I don't know about you, but the times in my life where I've prayed the most earnestly was times in deep problems. Yeah. Suffering. When I didn't know what to do. Mm. What about you? Yeah. Amen. When things are going real good, people tend to forget to pray to God. Mm. They tend to forget to do the things that God expects. Our mindset loses focus of Him. And He knows that. Yeah. So what happens? My brother made a statement one time, and I may not get it right, but he said this. He said, if problems brought you to Jesus, that might be what it takes to bring you back. Mm. <clears throat> God wants us to act like Jesus. By the way, He uses mean, rude, unkind, unthankful people and difficult circumstances to condition us yes. to be more like Jesus. Turn to Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Do y'all ever run into people like that? Mm. I've worked with them before. I don't now. <laughs> but I have. <clears throat> I even thought, well, you know what? I used to work. <laughs> <laughs> Years and years ago, before gray hair, I had this thought, you know what, if I never saw that person, life would be good. Mm. If I never saw that person again, life would be good. Isn't that sad? Yeah. I'm just confessing to you the thoughts that you may have had yourself. Right, Bruce. Amen. <clears throat> but God was working on me mm. during that time. In Luke chapter 6, Look at verse 35. But love ye your friends. No. Love ye your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. Why? For He is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. In other words, what he's saying here is, love your enemies, be good to those people who are mean to you. Why? Because that's what God does. Amen. And if we do what God does, then we're going to be His children. We're going to look like Jesus. 
We're going to be a spitting image, in other words, yeah. of what Jesus is because that's what He does. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You probably shine brighter for Jesus when those people who are mean and rude to you, unkind, they lie about you, they say bad things about you, mm. when you respond in a way that Jesus would. Amen. In other words, in kindness. Instead of reacting and, and, and having some knee-jerk reaction and saying something you ought not to, just say something kind. Mm -hmm. Or do something kind for them. That's even harder, I think. Because it requires more time, more thought, sometimes even money to do something kind for that person who is mean or rude to you. That's what Jesus said mm -hmm. right here in this verse. <clears throat> in Matthew 5, Jesus tells His disciples to go the extra mile. You've heard that term before, right? Go yeah. the extra mile. Yeah. That comes out of Matthew chapter 5 because Jesus was teaching His disciples <clears throat> to do what He said here in Luke chapter 6. Mm -hmm. To love your enemies, be good to them. And He said, if somebody asks you to go a mile, go with Him twain. Yeah. Or two miles. Yeah. Go the extra mile. What was He talking about? In the, in the culture of their day, the Romans had the legal authority to come to a Jew snatch them by the arm and force them to take and carry their armor for one mile. They could only ask for one mile. Not two. No more than one. And that Jew, by law, had to obey them and just stop what they're doing. They could have been on the way to the grocery store to get eggs and milk when this Roman soldier said, you, carry my, so my armor. They had to do it. Mm-hmm. That's what Jesus was talking about. He wasn't talking about go the extra mile when your friend says, hey, can you uh, give me a ride up to the store? Sure, I'll even give you a ride back. No, that's not what he's talking about. <clears throat> he's talking about the Roman soldiers. He was talking about mean people. When mean pe people that abuse you, people that use you, and you know it, and everybody else knows it, when they ask you for something, do it. Mm. And then go a little bit farther. That's what he's saying. Yeah. A little bit deeper meaning when you, when you understand the day that he said that in. Right? True. <clears throat> so why am I suffering? Why am I having to deal with this person? to make us more like Jesus. Mm. That's what He did. <clears throat> God is kind to the unthankful, as He said in Luke chapter 6, and to the evil. You know what? When it rains on your crops, mm. it's probably raining on your wicked neighbor's crops too. Yeah. Yeah. God is kind to the unthankful and to the wicked. Um, when I think of that, I think of Hitler <clears throat> who killed around 6 million Jews. God blessed him with vision, blessed him with hearing. He blessed him with the ability to use his hands and his feet for, I believe, up to around 50 years. God blessed him yeah. with good health. He actually blessed him with a Position. He blessed him, I'm assuming, with pretty much good wealth. I mean, you don't be the leader of a country and not have money. Mm -hmm. God blessed him. Was he wicked? Yes. Oh, yeah. I believe he died and went to hell. Mm -hmm. I don't know that for sure, but I believe he did. And I believe that God blessed him because he loved him and knew he would eventually wind up there anyway. You know, that's what he did for Judas. God knew. 
<clears throat> when Jesus was choosing the disciples, when he, when he chose Judas, he knew right then what would happen three years later. And yet, he fed him, he taught him, he trained him. He even gave him a position of, of responsibility. Judas held the bag. He was the treasurer of the group. Even on the day that Judas went to him with his Roman soldiers right behind him, Jesus said, friend, yeah. to Judas. Mm. Not because Judas was his friend, but because he was Judas's friend. He loved him. How do we look at those people who are mean to us? Do we wish they were never... <clears throat> that they never come around again? <clears throat> Trials and tribulations are here for a purpose. They're to grow us. When we react in anger and frustration, there's no growth. Amen. We failed that one. Yeah. We're going to have to take that test again. Right. <clears throat> I don't want to take the same test over and over if if I can help it. So the answer is to learn. God, what are you showing me in this problem? How do I need to react or better yet respond to this difficulty that you've given me? Maybe that person that did something or said something that was wrong, maybe they did have ill intentions. So did Judas. So did the Roman soldiers. So did the Jews that screamed out, crucify him. So did the Sanhedrin. They had ill intentions. <clears throat> but there was a reason for it. A reason so important that Jesus even said to Peter, Get thee hence, Satan. This has got to happen. He didn't go into detail, but if you and I were ever were going to have opportunity to make it to heaven, it had to happen. Amen. Satan knew that. That's why he put it in Peter's heart to try to get Jesus not to go through with it. And that's why Jesus said what He did. The difficulties and the trials that you have faced and possibly are facing even now have a purpose. <clears throat> and in order for God to shape us and mold us to be more like Jesus, it requires some suffering and some tribulation. Yeah. So instead of getting mad about it, embrace it and ask God, hey, God, I need, to, I need some help here. This is hard. This is difficult. But I want to learn what you're trying to show me. Yeah. Help me to see that. That's important. <laughs> help me to grow. And then you'll pass that test. You may not have to take that test again, but another one probably will come your way. And that's okay. Because as we read in Philippians chapter 1, suffering is a requirement. And that's okay. If God's only begotten Son needed it, we're definitely going to need it. Let's pray. Dear Father, I thank You for the problems that you've put in my path. And Lord, even though they're not comfortable and they're undesirable, they have a purpose. And I thank you for that purpose. Mm -hmm. Lord, I pray that you would help me to be more like Jesus, to act more like Jesus, to talk more like Jesus, and to think more like Jesus. Lord, I pray